my name's Dave Ford and this is my dog Logan out once again on a walk in the New Forest. Now today we're at a place called Ibsley which is right on the edge of the New Forest itself. Indeed we've even got a New Forest National Park sign just by me. Now Ibsley is halfway between Fordingbridge to the north and Ringwood to the south. Now today's walk we're going to be having a look at the site of what was once an old RAF airfield at Ibsley in the war. Uh, then we're going to have a little walk along through the village itself before darting into some woods where we'll be looking for an old battle command HQ and then up onto Ibsley Common where Logan will enjoy a very nice walk to our final destination something called a Huff Duff and I'll explain more about that later. Now we're filming today in November the weather anything can happen one minute it's nice and sunny the next minute it's pouring with rain so we'll see how we go anyway do join us. Well Ibsley was a bit of a, a backwater until in 1939 the man from the air ministry arrived and changed the characteristic of the place forever. Just behind me you've got this beautiful view but where the lakes are back in the 1930s was all agricultural land and fields and the man from the ministry decided it'd be a good place to put an airfield and so three runways were built there I think the longest was 4,800 feet the shortest was 4,000 feet and uh, aircraft pens were built something like 46 fighters could uh, stand there in relative safety two bellmen hangars a control tower and accommodation sites all over the place it was a fairly substantial setup construction of the airfield started in the winter of 1940 1941 and it opened in february 1941 it closed as an airfield shortly after the war and during the 1950s it was used as a motor racing circuit both motor cars and motorcycles in 1955 it reverted back to agricultural land and then in the 1960s uh, all of the runways were were ripped up and they started digging the site for aggregates basically that was underneath the surface and that's why you've got the lakes here today but there's a it looks like there's a couple of concrete circles in front of me uh, I'm guessing those would have housed Lewis machine guns to defend the site and uh, they'll say there's a memorial down in the valley quite close to where the airfield used to be and uh, that uh, well it's just on the edge of the village of Ibsley where it, it encroaches onto the village of Mockbecker or Mockbegger sorry and there's another memorial on the other side of the site as well I've just come off down from the ridge and I'm at a place called Mockbegger which is uh, right next to Ibsley but I want to have a look at the memorial that's right on the uh, corner of where the uh, airfield used to be I'll put a photograph up on screen so you can see it in much more detail and then what we're going to do from here is we'll have a quick look round we're going to go onto the north of the site just to see what we can see from the side. Well, I've just <laughs> climbed up a bank and I'm looking over onto what is now private land. But if I pan round, this is the area where the airfield once was. And uh, well, as you can see, it's, <laughs> it's all now mainly just lakes. Uh, it's, it's part of a nature reserve and indeed the lakes are, are used for fishing, sailing and, and, and water ski clubs. But very very peaceful but in the very very far distance I don't know if you can make out I can just about see it I'll try and get a, a 
a close-up picture but it's the um, the remains or the shell of the control tower I did um, write to the owners of the land asking for permission to film uh, the tower but my request was declined um, I believe it's a, a an area for bats roosting there so fair enough but it's a shame but the tower itself is quite um, uh, badly covered in graffiti anyway but uh, what a beautiful peaceful scene I meant to uh, say if you do get a chance to check out the 1941 film First of the Few um, starring David Niven and Leslie Howard because part of the footage used in the film was based here at, at Ibsley. Well the sun's gone in and the clouds have arrived. I think we're going to get wet soon. Anyway, although the um, airfield has now long gone, there are still lots of little bits of evidence floating around the village uh, relating back to uh, its use during the Second World War. But I think I keep saying the village of Ibsley, we're right on the edge. I think technically a lot of where we'll be looking is at uh, a place called Mock Beggar. But I've just come off the road for a second and I say this is just beside, I don't know, this looks as though it's um, a public area. It's not fenced off anyway. And here we can see some foundations of, I believe this is where the officers mess used to be and if we just turn around and have a quick look through here there's a a, a bit of a, a hump in the ground as it were and ah oh, that's what i was looking for this is a a little blast shelter <laughs> which a little pony's having a good look at as well and I say it's just a brick construction it's not a bunker or anything and it would have been big enough to house 32 people to protect them if there was an attack and uh, we'll leave this somewhat damp pony to uh, carry on grazing away okay we're now going to head south and head for a place called Moyles Court before eventually going into some some woodland and starting the walk properly. Well this impressive building to my left is called Moyles Court. Just turn around have a look at it. It's now a, uh, a school but uh, back in the Second World War it was requisitioned as a airfield station headquarters but there's been some sort of manor on this site since the Middle Ages and it's actually got a bit of history attached to it. It's famous for being the home of Alice Lyle, who was executed in 1685 for the harbouring of fugitives after the defeat of the Monmouth Rebellion at the Battle of Sedgemoor. In fact, I believe she was the last woman to have been executed by the judicial sentence of beheading in England. And there's a pub named after her just down the road. Well, now heading into the woods, we've got a little bit of company. These guys look nice and cosy in their little raincoats. Now you can see where we've come up, that's Moyles Court over in the, the distance. So we've just come along that road, then up a path up this little hill which is actually part of the Avon Valley path and then down that track there and this is the wooded area that we're now going to head into and uh, some more ponies in the field look pretty waterlogged we've had a lot of rain recently okay well done, managed to get through that okay. So what we're going to be looking out for here, we'll keep our eyes peeled for loads of 
evidence haha and already I've come across something here this yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the remains of a, just a small ammunitions building or small arms building now obviously completely demolished and covered in moss and I think as we head out into the dark wooded gloom <laughs> I said the forecast is the sun will come back later on and uh, yeah I can see another bit of brickwork over here just between those two trees in fact slightly more of a substantial lot of foundations and again that was another small arms uh, building all right now we are now going to head up towards the top of a hill to see if we can find this battle command headquarters lead on logan <laughs> halfway up this hill looking for the Battle Command HQ I'll tell you a bit more about that when we find it but in the meantime we found a little bit more evidence some trenches dug into the side of the uh, the hill and you can still see the some of the metal picket posts in situ And, uh, and gosh look over here still the uh, I guess that's some of the original corrugated metal being held back in place by the um, the picket posts I'm just turning around now 80 years ago these trees weren't here so there would have been a terrific view of the uh, the airfield from up here okay let's carry on heading on upwards it's quite steep apologies for all the puffing and panting yeah just about made it Ah, another little bit of evidence here a concrete circle I'm guessing this must have been a just a position for a chap with a, a Lewis gun I expect and now carry on and we get our first glimpse of the Battle Command HQ the reason this was here, like a lot of um, airfields similar to RAF Ibsley, there was always a worry that you know the Germans might land gliders full of troops on the airfield and take it over. And if that happened, they needed just a, a command centre, a little bit away from the airfield that had a good view of it, uh, so that they could coordinate the defence from there. And here it is. And what would have happened is the uh, station commander would have quickly run up here with two or three other officers perhaps a couple of signalmen and he'd have a terrific view as I said of the airfield from here so it's basically a bunker there are two cupolas or lookout positions a oh, quick look and that's the escape hatch by the looks of things and 
that's the other cupola. Interesting, that one seems to be looking towards towards the east, which is away from the airfield, whereas that one has a good view of the south and the west. But it's a, a terrific place to build it for viewing. I'm just coming around here. And here's the the entrance. And none of this is on private land, it's all um, accessible to the public. Indeed, there's even an information board there, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Right, well, let's go and have a look inside. I have got some, some lighting with me. Well, maybe some graffiti in here, so I apologize in advance if uh, there's anything untoward. Now there is an information board here. What I'll do is I'll see if I can put a photograph of that up on screen for you. All right, in we go. And around here. Okay, well that's where the toilet was. There are some stairs around here. Ooh, and this leads up into the first cupola or lookout position. So if one officer would have been up here. And let's see what we can see. So this is looking trying to get my bearings here. Yes, this is actually looking out onto where the airfield site originally was. Obviously trees have since grown. Okay. Alright, back down we go. Try not to bump my head. Now this is the room where the signal person used to be and there would have been some sort of board up against that wall and then just turning around through that little cubby hole that's where the signalman would have passed messages to the officer in command Uh, this is where the officer in charge would have been. See, he or she got the biggest room. A lot of debris down here, looks so the odd party or two has been held here. Oh, steps. And that's the escape hatch up there. This is the second cupola or lookout place. And again, we have a look around. So a whole area, so some of this was looking away from the airfield as well. I don't know if you're getting any of that. Looks like there's a sort of a bit of corrugated metal that sort of shields part of the view. I wonder if that's just part of the protection. All right, I need to find my way out. Someone's left a pair of shoes. Oh, I mean, considering this has been here for oh, 70, 80 years or so, it's in surprising good neck. Oh, can we find our way out? Yeah. Oh, 
daylight at last. Phew. Well, that was fun. <laughs> well, I enjoyed that. That was good fun. I thought I'd keep Logan out of the bunker. That looked as though there were bits of glass in there, so he was quite happy sitting outside. Just a thought, I, I keep calling those lookout positions cup holers. Back of my mind, they might be pronounced cupella. <laughs> if I got it wrong, sorry. Okay, so we're now going to head out of the woods and uh, head out across some lovely uh, open heathland. This is called, or it will be called when we get there, Ibsley Common. This, folks, is a huff duff. Let's go and have a look inside and get out the wind. It's uh, very exposed up here on the ridge. Oh yes, that's better. Now, there is a information board which tells us all about it. But a huff duff is basically a high frequency direction finding station. And what's left here is the base and there would have been a, a wooden tower 30 foot high on top of this. And indeed, if we look down, you can still see the bolts that the wooden tower would have been attached to. Yeah. And this, uh, I say, you would have been fairly brave to have worked a place like this, stuck out high up on a ridge, very little camouflage or protection. And no doubt the Germans would have been wanting to uh, put this out of action. But, uh, fascinating that it's, uh, that it's still here. As so I hopefully you'll be able to read the story rather than me blether away about it by looking on the screen. Now somewhere around here, not far from here, is the uh, there's a little air raid shelter and a hut where the two people that worked here would have stayed. And I think it's over there. Well just a few yards to the south of the Huff Duff is the remains of the uh, accommodation building where the um, the two signal men or women would have worked and then just to the side is the site of a, a tiny little air raid shelter that would have been used by the operatives okay now I'm not going to go inside here because it's too small for me but I just want to tell you the story or read you the lovely story of a ginger tomcat and the huffed up on the hill. Now I'll try and praise you as much as I can but basically the guys that worked here had a, a cat that spent most of its time reclining on the warm signal generating set but uh, apparently on one occasion from time to time the cat would start twitching its ears and shaking its head whenever a radio transmission was received from a, an aircraft. And uh, in recognition of the cat's ability to sense the importance of incoming radio signals, he was given his own pair of headphones. <laughs> oh. As time progressed, the crew started to take their cues from the cat. 
disp dispatching a bearing transmission even if they couldn't hear a strong signal themselves. What a fantastic story. I don't think Logan's that interested in stories about cats. Should we go back to the Huff Duff? Yeah. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk today. We hope you enjoyed it. We've had all sorts of weather, that's for sure. Wind, rain and some sunshine at the beginning. Hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk on the New Forest sometime in the future. In the meantime, thanks for watching and cheerio. Right, we've got a long walk back.